Good afternoon to Mr. Yang Kuan, co-founder of Kiwi Technology Incorporation. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third key speaker session of 2017 International Youth Leadership Summit on Artificial Intelligence, Era of Exponentialism. Artificial Intelligence, or abbreviated AI, in short, is intelligence exhibited by machines. In computer science, an intelligent machine perceives its environment and takes action that increases its probability of success at some goal. Simultaneously, the term artificial intelligence is applied when a machine mimics cognitive functions of a human mind, such as learning and problem solving. In the 21st century, AI techniques have experienced a resurgence following concurrent advances in computer power and the ever-expanding Internet of Things. Recent advancements in AI have contributed to the growth of autonomous things such as drones, self-driving cars, and facial recognition applications, becoming the main driver of innovation <coughs> and service-oriented daily lifestyle. Today, the Organizing Committee of International Youth Leadership Summit is pleased to have Mr. Yang Kwan, co-founder of Kiwi Technology Incorporation, as our honorable guest speaker. Kiwi Technology Incorporation is a Chinese technology and graphics company that specializes in providing consumer products and building 3D graphics and visual effects. Kiwi has developed Camora in 2016, a mobile camera app that creates 3D virtual reality effects on faces, similar to Snapchat lenses, and is currently available on Apple App Store and Android Play Store. In addition, Kiwi licenses its AI product Kiwi Face SDK to over a dozen mobile video and live streaming apps, including Fairy Live, Blue, and Livestore. By building strategic partnership with cloud service platforms like Agora and Chino, Kiwi is reaching over 1 billion audience networks. With that, I hereby invite Mr. Yang Kwan to the podium to present his talk on artificial intelligence. Hey guys, how's it going? Where's my PPT? I get nervous without PPT, so let's, let's do it. So uh, first I want to apologize that some of the content may be in Chinese, but I, last night I changed all the titles of each slide to English. So if you don't read Chinese, you get a rough idea, but I would say that 99% of people won't read the text on the PPT, they just read the photos. So we should be fine. Um, you can put it up. So about QV, so next. So what is QV, right? So lots of people say, you guys from New Zealand or what? We're actually not, we're from China. So either it's a fruit or it's a, a kiwi bird which is national bird of New Zealand. So because a lot of people say this, we actually change one of the apps to, to this kind of logo, but combine the face with the, the kiwi fruit together. <laughs> but again, we're, we're not from New Zealand. That's, that's, that's our name. It's just a it's very short name. It's, it's um, very powerful, short, easy to understand. This is our team. So our CEO and, and me, we both graduated from uh, UC Berkeley. He got a degree in uh, math and computer science, and after which he worked at Microsoft in Seattle for almost two years. And also, after Microsoft, he worked at LinkedIn, uh, and then he started his uh, first startup in a social app called Sober. And this, this project is his second startup. So I met him in 2009 at, at UC Berkeley. And I graduated with a degree in uh, financial engineering, so it's a master's degree. And after I graduated, I worked at Moody's Analytics in San Francisco and in Hong Kong for three years in total. So what I did back the time was to create some uh, financial models for uh, credit analysis for the portfolios. So there's a lot of programming, <coughs> mathematics, and statistics involved. And right now, I'm, I'm in company to uh, do lots of operations, and, you know, uh, at the CEO. And another uh, guy of ours, he's, uh, he's basically doing the MIT uh, PhD program in computer science. And his field is basically uh, machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, so help us do a lot of uh, research analysis. And he used to work at Google uh, for the AdSense team. 
And he also bad from UC Berkeley, that's how we know each other. And we also have a professor, Liu, from uh, Nanjing uh, Information Engineering uh, University. He is very famous at uh, computer vision. So if you, if you know computer vision, there's a very famous uh, image net. So basically, uh, lots of uh, rankings on computer vision are published on image net. So he actually uh, will rank number one in the world in multiple fields. Our team has uh, 25 people in total, uh, including this handsome guy over here. And uh, yeah, so the ratio of male to female is, is, is hard. <laughs> so if you're a girl and you want to join us, you know, please let, let me know. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see all the girls are here. Uh, half of our people are engineers, so very engineering and research heavy team. And we have several designers and several physics people. So that's us, right? Uh, what we do, our technology is two areas, so AR and AI. So we both focus on the human face because we think face is very important. And it's, it's basically a lot of people know each other by face. And it's the most powerful image of ourselves. So the AR, the augmented reality. Touch right? screen. Oh, it's touch screen. Did I touch it? Right. I'll be careful. <laughs> Just getting too excited. So AR is basically adding the virtual object onto your real face in real time. We achieve this in a mobile field. We're going to break this down and talk about each area in detail. The AI is, uh, is, very, AI is very big, it's a broad topic, but we're focusing on the facial recognition part of artificial intelligence. So through the machine, we can actually know who you are just with the, with the camera. And we use deep learning to, to achieve this. I'm going to talk more about this later. So let's get into some you know, hard stuff, some core stuff. Let's begin with AR. Who, know, who doesn't know AR? Let's give a, it's OK if you raise your hand. Just like, okay. so, so, so basically, I tell you about one experience. So I was in uh, Silicon Valley this uh, two months ago in May. I was there for a conference. So when I passed through the immigration, still need a visa pass for immigration. The officer just stopped me at random. He just because I carry a lot of uh, you know stuff to for, for the exhibition, right? Carry a lot of bags. So he's very suspicious. Like this guy carries so many things. You know, why why do you come to America? So hey, why do you come here? I'm like, I'm here to attend a conference. What conference? A conference in augmented reality. He said, what's augmented reality? Right? So I really think hard on how to explain this to him. I was like, have you watched a movie like Harry Potter? He's like, oh yeah. I said, do you remember on the movie, like if you walk by the wall, there's actually a portrait. But if you look at the portrait, actually the face moves, right? I can talk to you. That's kind of the idea. It's like something is there, but it can interact, the virtual world can interact with you in real time and the ability to add the virtual interaction onto the real world. That's augmented reality. So that's how I explained to him. I'm not sure whether he understood. <laughs> he just like, okay, you know, just, just, just go, whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know, I'll just put it out there. So AR, so we can break it down to different uh, uh, horizons. So first I want to say that if you look at time as a vertical, the evolution of technology Start with the personal computer. You know, I'm talking about information evolution. So this one starts around the 1980s. Let's say 1987 as personal computer, and then we go to the internet era, right? 1997, 10 years later, we go to the internet era, and then again, 10 years later, we go to the mobile era, like 2017 when the iPhone was released. Right? Lots of you know uh, fashions going on to the, the mobile. World. And then again, 10 years later, now we're in 2017, and then people start to talk about VR, the virtual reality, AR, and MR, mixed reality. So this is kind of the time vertical uh, in, in general. And last year, 2016, was, was publicly recognized as the starting year of VR. But the last year, when you, when you listen to the news, talk to people, not too many people talk about AR. So lots of people are, are talking about VR. We put on the headset, you can actually be detached to the real world. You can see any virtual object. But at the second half of 2016, you start to hear uh, people talk about 
augmented reality, right? Not just a completely different virtual world, but the ability to add up the real world. And then 2017, the AR started to become you know, more and more of a topic. You know, lots of people saying AR is gonna be bigger than VR in the future because we can't be completely detached from reality. There has to be something for the reality right now. So MR is basically a very close term to AR. The so mixed reality means I'm able to add a virtual object, I'm able to recognize where the floor, where the ceilings are. And based on those information, I can virtually put the object there. If you, if you, if you watch the uh, Microsoft HoloLens uh, introduction video, you'll know what MR is. So all these three terms can be summarized, sorry, I'll touch it again. <laughs> all these three terms can be summarized as XR. Right? So X is basically, uh, if you study you know, mathematics, a variable that can be replaced by V or A or N. So all this can be called XR. So this is kind of the time horizon we're at right now. Next. And if you look at the landscape is horizontal, so if you, if you break it down from here, this is the AR landscape. A lot of companies are doing AR efforts in different areas, applications, tools, uh, devices, employment. I have no time to go through each of them, right? I, I don't think you wish me to do that. So we're, we're gonna go to the next slide. To look at some of the big players, like what, what they do. Can anyone tell us like which the, the what this one is? Nobody? Just just give it give a shot. I, I don't have a gift, by the way, you can just give it a shot. <laughs> this one is actually the, 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 the mixed reality. This is the whole lens. So basically the Microsoft, this Microsoft company. You know, they release a device, which is very expensive, like three thousand dollars. You can wear that device. So through that device, it's a transparent, basically, a lens through which you can see the virtual, let's say, note on your refrigerator, the virtual photos, virtual like video player on the wall. This is a this is mixed reality. So this is basically Microsoft. This is Snapchat. Right? Lots of people can use that Snapchat. Um, so Snapchat acquired a company called. Luxury in 2013. So Luxury is a company that first realized the virtual uh, object on mobile. Right? So this is a user device, this is on mobile. So Snapchat acquired Luxury and, and it basically improved its model. Now be known as the Snapchat lenses. This is Google. So Google, what they do is they released a project called Project Tango. So, Project Tangle is a phone that has a depth camera, is able to know the distance, let's say, from here to the wall. And then through that screen of the phone, it's able to put virtual object in the screen. That's Google Tangle. Uh, by the way, I have a Tangle phone with me right now, so if you want to experience that, you're welcome to try that. I might just come and pass this around. Um, for those who haven't tried this, um, has anyone tried the Tangle before? The Tangle phone? This is basically Google's uh, approach. So the idea I want to give you is different big players approach the AR in a different way. They are a different kind of way of thinking. Um, let me just finish this slide first and we'll pass it around. This is Facebook, right? So if you're watching me on Facebook uh, this year, in April, they released a uh, AR Studio. So AR Studio is basically, if you know, like Facebook is, is competing with Snapchat in a lot of ways, right? It's kind of a social uh, rare. So through this AR Studio, the designers are able to design their own AR object through this platform. And after that, the designer can publish its design on Facebook camera. So that's AR Studio, that's what they do. And Zuckerberg uh, firmly believes like AR is going to be the next computational platform. So this is Facebook in this year, 2017 April. This is Apple. So Apple released AR Kit with their iOS 11, and uh, it's going to come with. I think iPhone 8 has. It's going to have a depth camera. Right? A lot of people say that. So with AR Kit, you're able to develop your own apps in AR. For example, I can develop an app that measures the distance from here 
to the end of this room, right, using air. Yeah. I can develop an app that places, let's say, a tank here on the mouth, and then it moves, and when I move my iPad or something, it's gonna stay there. And I can develop an app for games. So lots of attractions after uh, the ARK was published. So Apple got this technology from acquiring a company called Mattel, right, back in the time. So this is basically what the big players are doing. Um, so you can see different approaches here, right? Let, let me summarize all this stuff. So Microsoft is thinking about, okay, I can build a hardware that is wearable on my head, through which you can see augmented reality, virtual reality. Snapchat and Facebook are thinking, okay, I think everyone has a cell phone. So why don't I just upgrade the cell phone right now? Like, I can use my phone to show the AR effect. Google is thinking, your cell phone right now is not good enough. Let me put this depth camera on your cell phone so that it has better AR effect. Right? Apple is thinking, okay, I'm going to have this AR kit similar to those, not just for the faces, but also for other objects. I can have this AR development tool if I want to develop, develop the AR content. So right now, I'm just going to pass this around, and uh, you guys can just check it out. This is Google, by the way. Work with the mobile. Let me just show one thing. I'm not sure what this one can connect to the screen, so you guys just can see yourself. And uh, I'm going to have this. You can just, just look at it around. It has like a virtual object in real time, like a virtual dot. And you can just, just yeah, it's pass it around. <laughs> <laughs> or, or let's say you can change this one to. Maybe this is more. So, so first, it has recognized a circus. Yes. Let's say this is a circus. Okay. You can see the flowers all around. You can just pass it around to people. Let's see. So, so, so I hope, like, by giving this lecture. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So. What I hope by giving this lecture is, um, I'm not just gonna, you know, be selfishly talking about our firms, but also give you guys a little bit, you know, broad view of what's going on in the industry. Um, that's the end of industry introduction. This is key. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do, uh, a lot of people, uh, you may realize, a little bit similar for Snapchat, we have this virtual lenses on your on your head. I'm gonna play this video to show you our models. This is it. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Curry meant for the Green Finals. Uh, this one is a little bit laggy, but the reality is not laggy at all. It's probably something to do with the system. <laughs> So you can download this on the App Store. Uh, we have LS. Uh, Android is coming up. So if you use iPhone, you can scan and download. Uh, this is our app. I'm just going to take this from you. I don't think do you mind. Okay. Okay, cool. So not just we publish our own app, we also enable other people to use our technology by giving out SDK. So we democratize this AR facial effect by giving them uh, stickers, virtual stickers, the uh, beautifications like eye magnifier or you know, like chain or whatever. Like lots of girls use this, right? Maybe guys in there too, but lots of girls use it. Um, uh, animations, uh, this, you know, 3D avatar, and oh yeah. And then change the, uh, the background. Real time, so you're gonna recognize the outline of your figure and change the background. So these are all the features you can get from using SDK, and we beat our competitors because we have not just have features, but our uh, efficiencies, uh, efficiencies are better. I'm not sure why this doesn't this looks a little bit weird. 
But this is kind of a comparison. <laughs> this was this is a comparison of ours versus the competitors. So we basically are more smooth. We run like faster on lower Android phones. This is the CPU and RAM usage breakdown. So our usage is lower than the uh, the competitors. Do you have any, any questions? You can just let me know. So this is SDK. So to summarize, we serve uh, I think around fifteen or twenty customers. So the customers are the uh, video chat apps, the live broadcasting apps. You know, China people like to eat to live broadcast themselves. Yep. So, <laughs> what's that? Yeah. <laughs> Do you, you watch a lot of? Yeah, video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a live kind of scenario where like an app using our technology, so like, having like the virtual uh, airs, and then yeah, this is this is our customers and our partnership like like who we'll, we'll mentioned. The Agora and the Qingyou and Huanxin. So those companies are the live streaming companies. So they integrated the official SDK as part of their solution. So we're not just staying with AR completely. Uh, we also one of our company in uh, one of the companies in the HTC Vive uh, Accelerator program. So if you if you if you know Vive HTC Vive. It's a VR headset. So because VR is so new, so they want to create this uh, ecosystem where they invite a lot of companies to develop content, develop add-ons for for Vive. So we're part of that, and uh, we just finished our accelerator program uh, last month. So this is what we do in the accelerator program. So basically, we made this AR technology into a little bit like a VR. What I mean by that is you can see the video here. See, like my face, this is me by the way. So my face will change to a different face in real time and split into two views with a different angle. So once you put on the, the VR headset, you're able to see me in VR with a different face. Right? So let's say you're not satisfied with your wife and girlfriend's face, you can swap it with any select. <laughs> but you just have to wear that. Outward device and that's it. So, did I go very really fast? I still have 40 minutes to go. I'll talk a bit slower, but if you have, if you have questions here, let me know, right? I don't want you to stack all your questions at the end because you may forget some of the content I talk about. So, you can just interrupt me at all times. Um, so, that's the end of AR, right? And then we're going to talk about AI, the, the artificial intelligence. So first, this concept of deep learning. So artificial intelligence is a very broad term. It, it, it includes a lot of different sub areas. For example, like machine learning is part of artificial intelligence. You know, deep learning is part of machine learning. But what really got on fire this year is, is the technology of deep learning. So deep learning is made available through two advancements. One is our hardware the cost of computation is getting lower. So every, everyone knows that Moore's law, right? The, the, the cost of computation is, is getting faster and faster at exponential rate. So right now we have this GPUs, the graphic processing unit, that is very cheap and is able to process a lot of uh, 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 computations. Um, so first is our hardware made it available for us to process a lot of data in real time. And second is we have an ever-growing amount of data available. So with the big data and the low cost of hardware, the deep learning is available by using a neural network you know, structure. So the neural network is based on these two advancements. So why do we why do we choose deep learning? Why a lot of people like this? Is that as the amount of data grows, the performance of the model is getting increasingly better with deep learning. So this is the older, sorry, this is the older learning models. This is deep learning. So deep learning is proved to outperform a lot of traditional machine learning models. So that's why this, a lot of people are using this. And it's really got fire in years. So give you a little bit, uh, very high level introduction of how deep learning works. So this is what you see as a neural network. 
So people get this idea from study, you know, people's brain, how the brain works. The brain has like trillions of different neurons. And each neuron is connected to a neuron in the next layer. And the information passes through from a neuron to the next and to its adjacent neurons and so on. So we cannot imitate how the brain works in a computer program. If you think about how people recognize, let's say, how do people recognize the face? How do I know who she is? If you think about this, people actually break it down to different parts. So I can say that, okay, her eyes look like one of my friends, or like her mouth look like another celebrity. We can break it down to different parts of the face. So this is similar to how deep learning works. First, it's going to scan this photo, and then it's going to retrieve this information. So because, let's say the eyebrows is made of lines or like circles, you know, the, the curves, it's going to retrieve this little element in the first step. And then the second step is going to combine this kind of little elements together to form different, let's say, organs like the eye or the nose. And then we're going to put it together to form a face. So this is very similar to how human recognize the object. We break it down to small parts, we put it together, and then in, in the end, it's gonna know who this person is because a similar person may have slightly different nose, but a very similar face, but still it's a different person. Right? So this is how deep learning works. But in order to achieve this, it's gonna use a lot of data to train the weights between the neurons. How do I know the weights are? I know this person, I know the results. I train this model over and over again to adjust each weight in between the neurons. And over time, if I have a lot of data, millions of faces, I can uh, twist this the weight in a way that is rec it's going to recognize 99% of the people. Right? So that's how deep learning works in a nutshell. Getting sleepy? Or <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is our deep learning model. It's called PV Phase X, and we achieve an accuracy rate of 99 point uh, almost seven percent. And this is the example like Michael Jackson who went after. We still recognize him as the same person, right? So, so as a human face, you can tell. You know, it's very hard to tell, but but because it, because it maintains like certain organ and certain like, ratios, the the machine is able to tell it's the same person. And so in comparison, our accuracy rate is in par with Tencent, with Baidu, uh, with Plus Plus. Um, so we're, we're basically among the top performing uh, models. And you can actually you know, test yourself here by going to this link. So this is how we perform. Uh, if you study the area of uh, facial recognition, you're going to know this LFW. It's short for Label Face for the Wild. So this is, this is a data set that you can test your models upon. So this is our performance here. And the, the different verticals, uh, this is the false positive rate. This is the true positive rate. So what I want is I want the true positives as high as possible and the false positives as low as possible. For example, the true positive is like if I can recognize me as the same person if I, let's say, have a different hairstyle or wear a glass or not, it's true positive. False positive is if there's two different person, they should tell me it's different people rather than the same people. So there's a trade-off between the two. So I want this to be as high as possible and the false positive to be as low as possible. And then our curves actually above a lot of competitors. So you want this to be further to the left hand side. So on this range, this range is very commonly used range for a false positive. 10 to, negative, uh, 10 to the power negative 3 means that I can accept there is one error with, within a, lot, a thousand people. So if I do a lot, thousand people comparison, if there's one error, I can accept that. Right? So between this 10 to negative uh, 3 to 10 to power negative 4, it's the most common usage of the range. So within this range, our true positive rate is actually above the competitors. Um, so the functions here, so not just we can recognize the face, we can detect how many faces in a photo. Right? You can put a camera on the, you know, 
on, on, on a building or whatever, in your restaurant, you can count how many customers going to your, your restaurant. Is it recognized the gender, the, the age, can guess the age, I would say, can guess the emotions, you know, the facial expressions. And also, you cannot cheat by printing out a photo, right? Because a photo cannot move its eyebrows or, or mouth, so we can detect a live face in real time. Any any questions or or you guys are obvious? Uh, do you use this app in, in some mobile phones? It's, it's a simple app, like in uh, in different companies like Sony and other mobile camera. Yeah. They also have this kind of feature. Yeah. So you are using uh, this feature as a separate app, or it is integrated with some camera? Uh, I'm gonna talk about the usage later, but this algorithm isn't run on mobile. It's run on the on the server. Because uh, the mobile doesn't have enough computation power to run this. If you if you put on a mobile, the accuracy rate is going to drop. So what we do is we use a mobile camera. We capture the. I'm going to show you a demo later. We capture the photo. We send it to the backend server. It recognizes the face and just give it back to the result. So that's. So I have used this feature in Xiaomi. Xiaomi. Yeah, yeah and uh, it was a bad experience because sometimes it recognizes me as a female. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> like what, what are the times you are like that? Sometimes. You know, maybe it has said something. <laughs> so, but it runs on the mobile. Yeah, on the mobile. Because to run on the mobile, you're going to suffer from the performance. That's why you have lower access to it. Um, I don't know why. It's, it's very hard to achieve my As I have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does it recognize your nationality too? <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it's awesome. Uh, you mentioned that, uh, like, uh, actually, I am working on a problem. Almost for reading the right and wrong. Yes. So, how you can, like, the most difficult on this kind of software <coughs> is kind of actual giving, uh, uh, actual numbers giving, like, the support that. Uh, uh, age, yeah. Uh, age. Yeah. So if I go like that, it's like different age and little different. Yes. Lawyer. Yes. So when you make a software, <coughs> yeah, so when you put the data on there, so like you have to which method you should notice to have this much age have a, because of the color, like the skin tone, like uh -huh. brightness. Yeah. Yeah. Blood flow. Yeah, it does. It has yeah, the effect. Yeah. Something else. Yeah. What you took from the basic fundamental from there. Yeah. So you're you're asking about the age, right? Yeah. Suppose it is. <clears throat> yeah. So this one we just need we just use a lot of data. So for you example, a lot of data. You mean? have you are like twenty I don't know twenty years old and yeah. a lot of people of age twenty years old can be like dark face or bright face or yeah. different stuff. So it's gonna capture all that. So you going to capture all the pictures. Uh -huh. So the pictures capturing like the pictures have the what like unit like what kind of unit you to figure out there like a glowing face. Uh -huh. Suppose that I put a very good cream. Yes. And it look like. Yes. Young. It's gonna have an effect. Yes. Not the cream even. If I go and do a jogging and after yeah. come back, I will. Yeah. Face it's not very accurate. Like yeah. yeah. And that is very difficult to right. recognize the face. Right. So if you shave your beard, you know, you might appear. Of course it's different. Different. It's like, so what you... It needs time to grow the beard. Yeah, so oh. what you use on that, like, which unit you use to recognize the face, like, blood flow? So blood that's, flow, yeah, yeah I, I cannot tell you, like, a single single element, but it has all different things put together, including the distance between, let's say, your your eyes or whatever. When you get older, you can change your, your future in a way. But I cannot point out a single element that is the most important. No, at least uh, which kind of unit, like what kind of, like you said, combining the, all the screens, like facial uh, expression. But uh, Yeah, it doesn't matter. So so when you train a model, the input image is going to have all different angles, different facial expressions, different like, makeups. But I know the age of each input image, so I can train my model in a way that captures all that. So but it's not accurate. It's not... So that's not accurate then. Probability will be not true at I mean, like. Even sixty, uh, even uh, eighty percent correct. Um, I don't know exactly how accurate this age like estimation is. 
the 99 plus 7 is a different measure. But I know what you're saying is like a lot of uh, apps that I see can tell your age, like Xiaomi phone, right? No, but, totally about the Xiaomi. If you use your software, your like whatever device, you uh -huh. have, your device also have this kind of drawback. Uh huh. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, it's gonna change. Yeah, yeah, it does. So like, uh, because uh, if you know the fundamental, like what is the unit behind that, uh -huh. like uh, heat, flow, whatever things. Uh -huh. So if you use uh, like a few days, we like the key, like heat measurement. If you will have a different heat measurement on that basis, you can you know the age. And if somebody will angry, then somebody will happy, then depend on different. Uh, the facial expression and that's made it. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So you can you can basically categorize different facial expression, for example, as a control group, like a fixed effect, right? You can just yeah. leave out facial fixed effect. Um, I don't I don't know about that because I'm not sure how that works on, on top of deep learning model. Okay. That's actually a very traditional way of creating a machine learning model. So I'm not sure how these two can combine together, but I think it's a it's a good thought. Um, I, I can't answer right now, to be honest. I don't know. Maybe it can work better, like, like what you said. But a lot of uses, like, let's say, change your face the age very fast, you can take like a moving average of your face in the last second or something. But it, honestly, it's not very accurate because the computer doesn't take more information than this image. So even human eyes can be deceived, let's say, if you put on a cream, you appear younger, right? Even the human eyes can tell your real age. Unless I know you're you in person, so. But it's a good question. It's a good question. So so what you're saying is when you let the machine do deep learning, basically they just you just you just give them a lot of inputs and then you tweak the output. So then the machine can compare with the past data that uh, this is probably twenty four and this is like twenty five years old based on past data. I, so right. So there's two steps, right? So one is train the model. <coughs> so when you when you said was. I put a lot of image here as an input. I don't take the output. I know the output. I know who you are. So basically, this is the, the fixed result. I take all the weights in between so that the accuracy like, is, is higher. So after training, so training takes a lot of data, takes a lot of hardware to train. After training, you run the model. It doesn't take as much hardware because you don't take a lot of input data. You only take one image. Let's say if I run a model, I want to see who you are, I just put your image here, it's going to predict a result. Right? That's how in general model works. Not just deep learning model, but all of like machine learning works in these steps. On um, one minute, can you have a word? Actually, I'm thinking like that if you can do like this way, like, you know, the uh, retina, the eye's retina can yeah. change by the age. Yes, yes, so yeah. Life long. Yes. So if you make this like your server working on the server, so you put it like a number of eyes, like uh, when the person buy a computer, the computer person buy a uh, mobile, yeah. you can store his uh, retina images. Yeah. And then you can know the actual time, what, what is the, the age. And then when retina is already detected and retina goes to that uh, data goes to him server. So yeah. when the person will come on there and get data, the retina match with the, that person retina, then they give an actual case. So that is number of chances is very rare to uh, get the wrong information, like to give the wrong information about the age. Yeah, so um, and you raise a different topic. It's like the bio recognition yeah, field bio has, recognition different, recognition. has different uh, um, focus. So one is you can use face, you can use mm -hmm. retina, you can use your, your your palm, you can yeah. use your finger. Yeah. You know, every approach has pros and cons. Right? So for retina, it's, it's more accurate. You know, your retina doesn't change. Like, when you're born as a baby versus now, it's the same. But in order to detect that, you need a special device, and then you have a distance error problem. Right? Let's say in the facial recognition, I can basically recognize my face in like two meters away, but with retina, you have to walk really close. So there's different use cases and pros and cons of each. Uh, but we're focusing on the facial part first. Yeah, I, I appreciate your question, but but I think I think you helped me till a lot of time. So I, I'm just hope to I hope to rush up a little bit. And I'm gonna save more. I mean, you, we, you can still ask questions, but, but we're gonna save more questions for, for later on. Right? I, I realize this had a lot of slides. Um, 
So the model is robust on different scenarios, so different angles, you know, uh, different like distances, age, and also different uh, makeups. It's going to recognize the same person. So the application of this includes uh, one of them is a the smart gate system. You you go to you know a train station, you go back to your apartment, you know, scan your face. I think a lot of the offices have this right now. Some companies doing this, like Facebook Plus, or since time you have this scan phase, you know, you know, check in your office. And we're partnershiping with uh, because we're based in Nanjing, we're partnership with some local uh, businesses. For example, this one on the retail store. So what they do, this one I came from Seattle. So what they do is under every product they put an iPad. So on the iPad is gonna display the information for the product. But also through the iPad camera, it's going to read the customers, right? So who is watching this, how long time, how many people are passing by, is it a male or female, like old or young? They want to get all this big data from the retail store. So they want to want us to provide this backend technology for them, like a smart retail store, like big data, kind of like you. So AR and AR put together, right? We, we, we walk through uh, each of them and we put it together. Um, so our roadmap is we have the AR SDK, we have visual recognition. We're gonna combine this together and we we raise a concept called smart AR. So if you think about AR as computer graphics, computer graphics means the computer is gonna render, it's gonna display information on top of the real world. The AI is computer vision, means the computer is reading information from the real world. So there's two different directions. So this is write, this is write, this is read. So the smart AR actually means I write based on what I read, right? So I use facial recognition to know who this person is. And based on that person, I'm going to display an AR effect that the person likes. This is a, the simple explanation of smart AR that, that what we're trying to do. So the smart AR has a lot of uh, use cases. So one of them is actually the adver advertisement. So right now, the advertisement screen has a lot of problems. For example, it doesn't recognize who you are. Like when I, I don't know, like, like my building has a lot of advertisement, on like you know, plastic surgery and all stuff. It doesn't relate to me. So if it's able to, Maybe it does, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't do that. So if it knows who I am and what I care, it can display information based on my preferences. So this is the smart AR screen we're trying to make. So it has two areas. One is AR effect. It's going to give you the virtual try on in real time. And then it can recognize your face and the you know, re retrieve the uh, big data information like the age, like the, the emotions, you know, uh, gender. So we can achieve this by simply adding a camera on the current, you know, on the machine. That's it. So one single camera, it knows her face. This is my partner. You know, he looks very tired, but I'm still gonna play his face. This is Snapchat, by the way. We just stole his there. Their advertising, but just to show you the concept. So this is a movie advertising, like AR movie. At the same time, it's gonna get the data, right? So I think before that, let me give you like a little demo here on what I mean by this. 